Hi, this is Andy Bicking from Scenic Hudson celebrating the 50th anniversary of Earth Day with Assembly Member Dee Dee Barrett, who is a great advocate for the environment in her home district here in the Hudson Valley. How are you today, Dee Dee? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Andy? I'm doing well, thank you. And um, we're just really excited to have this opportunity to take some of our advocacy and education online. I can't think of a better member of the legislature to do with that, do that with. You know, it was about 50 years ago when the first Earth Day took place and citizens from all over the country came together and they collectively worked to do teach-ins, they collectively worked to communicate about their concerns and really fight for a healthier world. Now, I'm just wondering, given your, um, your experience with the state legislature and previously in your career, what does uh, Earth Day mean to you and, and why is the environment important? Well, um, I have mixed feelings saying, I actually have mixed feelings about Earth Day and where it is right now in many ways, but saying that I actually remember the first Earth Day and uh, uh, remember that, that sense of, um, as somebody who grew up in Southern California, what it meant to be living in an incredibly awful, smoggy environment in an otherwise extraordinarily beautiful place. And um, I have mixed feelings because I can't believe that we are still fighting many of the same fights now, um, 50 years later, that we did, including uh, just acknowledging uh, the crisis that, that our planet is in, recognize the importance of science. Um, just, uh, it's, you know, it's hard to um, understand how, while there's been enormous progress on certain fronts and, and, uh, and there's been, a, you know, great cleanups in places like our beautiful Hudson River Valley, um, you know, we still are fighting PCBs and you know and and uh, and other threats and uh, and clean water issues and you know throughout um, different parts of the of the country, but I'm also very happy to see the next generations picking up um, the the battle and and continuing to fight and I you know I think one of the most hopeful things is that we you know as we see the um, the young people this you know the the high school and college kids that are committed to um, making sure that that we finally do start addressing the significant changes that we have to and they're making lifestyle choices uh, to support that uh, and you know that that um, that is hopeful but I know you know more than ever we're at a critical point here where uh, you know I hope we haven't passed a tipping point great comments yeah and I'm just thinking back to some of our work together, you know, helping to promote some of the environmental causes in your district and the Hudson Valley and broader New York State. Um, what kind of uh, accomplishments that you've had as a legislator that are, are you most proud of? And, you know, also kind of paired with that, just looking forward, what are the emerging issues that you really hope to continue to address through your work? Uh, well, I am very proud of the work that we've done together, uh, particularly on, on carbon farming. Um, I find that my sweet spot in, you know, in the work that, that, that I've been doing in the legislature is kind of the nexus of agriculture and environmental concerns. I have a very rural district. We have amazing farms, um, small and mid-sized farms largely. This region was once the breadbasket of America. Um, and I, I, I hope that it will continue to, to play that role. And so carbon farming, which um, really is a win-win-win for the environment because it takes carbon out of the atmosphere where it's toxic and puts it in the soil where it increases productivity and makes the soil healthier and, and retains um, water and, and, uh, and, and makes, you know, makes the, the farming um, much more productive. Uh, been able to kind of raise its profile, um, even though it's a time-honored practice that, that many of the farmers in this region probably practiced uh, 300 years ago when they, you know, first settled. But, but it is, it has been out of fashion and it's, we've, we've helped support its, um, its return in a, with a pilot program that we're, uh, that we're doing right now in the Hudson Valley. And, um, and hopefully that will expand across the state. But, even so, we've continued to um, 
to really pique the imagination of other states and other parts of the country with the work that we're doing here. And one of the exciting things is a coalition of, um, of, of regional states that are coming together to look at this issue and see how we can't support each other and make sure that this is part of the uh, of any climate change agenda moving forward. And uh, we've had a couple meetings of this coalition and uh, that's been very exciting. We're also working uh, with, um, I'm kind of very interested in the, the, the full cycle of, um, of, of carbon and, um, and making sure that, that uh, we have food systems and economic systems that are supporting uh, these kind of agricultural practices and supporting our, our farms. And uh, so we've been, we've been exploring uh, some initiative, initiatives with uh, restaurants and, um, and, and producers in, um, in the food industry to see how the Hudson Valley may lead, might lead on uh, a kind of a farm to table, back to farm and, uh, and, and get some support through restaurants and, and caterers and others um, directly for this carbon farming initiative and, and help support our farmers that way. So we're really kind of continuing to look uh, outside the box at alliances and partnerships that will move us forward. And, you know, once we reopen the economy, which, you know, I think we're working towards in a, you know, in a, in a smart and thoughtful way now, um, these, you know, the, we, we can't go back to doing things the way they were. We need to make these changes happen. And, and I think it's really important to start that conversation with an understanding of, of how agriculture and the connecting food system can work. And um, so I look forward to being part of that as well. And I look forward to continuing work that we've also done together on, uh, on soil health, because, uh, you know, so many of our laws in New York State are still um, kind of growing out of the, the, the dust bowl. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, we are overdue for some new policies and some new laws to, to support the, you know, the, the kind of work we need to be doing now. Yeah, yeah that's a great point. So, you know, what really strikes me is you know, we are in New York State and in your district in particular, really on the cusp of some important cutting edge science that has the ability to help transform uh, so much of the world for better and deal with the you know, existential climate crisis that we're fa facing, but also in the process that there is this real tie-in to um, people's well-being and uh, both uh, quality of life with the food that they get and their nutrition, but also economically and that the jobs that this can be creating. And exactly. So exciting yeah. to work on that with you. Thank you. I very much look forward to that. And I hope in what you just said about science that maybe um, some of what we're seeing in, in the renewed appreciation for science and the role that science plays through this crisis will carry over into understanding how climate, science, climate scientists and, you know, and the, the science that we're doing around soil health and other things will, you know, will get the, be, be recognized um, for the gravitas that it brings to the conversation. Indeed. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, happy Earth Day to you. Happy Earth Day to you too. Happy 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm.